listening to the Myco Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator advocate and educator every week he sits down with fellow cultivators mushroom educators scientists and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives all right what's up everybody welcome to the michael geeky podcast it's your host, Michael Geeky. Tonight, we got a great show. We're live right now. I am in a basement as we speak, like many of you. Not in, not as in front of a flow hood as some of you are, but still, I'm, I'm flow hood adjacent tonight. Uh, we got a good show. Uh, we got a little last minute uh, shift in, in programming tonight. But of course, of course, something interesting happened this week on Michaelholics Anonymous. Uh, just want to first off, shout out all the mods, uh, on Michaelholics Anonymous. Now I got more mods to shout out. Uh, they are doing a great job kind of giving me some pro tips on how to keep the, the, the ship going and, and steered in the right direction. Um, and some cool stuff happened this week. Uh, we've had some great posts. Um, I think for anybody in the group, uh, I think it's, it's probably this easy. If you did a post and it got a lot of traction, that's probably the right post. You probably gave a lot of background information. You probably said something compelling. You probably asked a good question um, and you brought something to the table. If you did a post and it didn't get a lot of traction, you probably just didn't put as enough thought into it. I, I really, I've been watching it. It really seems to be that easy. The more thoughtful the post, the more like genuine the post is, uh, it seems like the better it does. And I'm going to say one of the coolest posts we've had this week was uh, a, a little narrative that unfolded uh, with, with the Michael moms. They, uh, they're they're going to come on tonight. They're going to tell that story. Uh, and we're going to get to know a little bit more about their obsession with uh, Slosby Natalensis and uh, why they love it, why they grow it, why they talk about it a lot. They do, trust me. They, they, they like to bring up Natalensis. And there's a reason, and tonight we're going to find out what that is. Uh, as you guys can tell, I'm getting over a cold. I, I think uh, in the last week I've probably um, coughed 14 million times, and uh, yeah, the voice is suffering as a result. So anyway, I'm going to do my best tonight. Uh, I want to shout out uh, my Discord. We did, we did a giveaway. We're going to do some more giveaways. You know, we're, we're keeping it hustling in there. Uh, I want to say I'm seeing a lot of great activity in there. A lot of people are also raising the bar in there. Uh, a lot of great discussions around wood lovers, around uh, gnats, around pans. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's been good. Uh, and the beginners channels is doing really well too. So uh, glad that Discord's thriving. Um, I got some stuff in the mail this week. I could probably show it off. Uh, you know, we had uh, the, the the homies from uh, Mycology Network on not too long ago. And uh, old mushy fun guy, he said, you know what? Let me send you something. I just got this in the mail. Check it out, guys. Oh, my gosh. Look at it. Wait, where am I pointing to? There we go. There we go. I love it. And there we go. I've got a cool logo. I like my logo. Anyway, thank you so much, Mushy Fun Guy. Really appreciate it. I'm going to be rocking that one this, this summer for sure. Um, what else did I get? Yes. Oh, I got some other stuff. I'm not going to talk about that uh, this week. But, guys, everybody likes looking in the mirror these days. We are definitely turning into a narcissistic society, right? We just, we got our phones. We're taking selfies all the time. This is what we do. So, you know, geeky is not immune to these 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 little, little changes but i gotta show you something so i got this box today this is black box inside the black box it's always interesting stuff inside a black box right so let me just go ahead and show you this i don't know if you guys know um if you guys uh been been seeing these promo videos for stealthy spores uh they are putting together a trading card game like a legit Pokemon Magic the Gathering style trading card game that we can play. And I was asked uh, if I wanted a card, if I wanted to be a card in this game. 
who doesn't want to be a card in a game. When we're little children, it's what we dream of, to be a card in a game. Honestly, I never in a million years thought I would be a card in a game. This one is coming absolutely out of left field. But let's, let's take a look at this. Here we go. It says it right there. It's official. I must be a hero. I don't know about that. Maybe to my kids. That's definitely who I want to be a hero to. Um, what does this say here? By day, Mike O'Geeky works as an at-home mushroom cultivator, fighting for the rights of all of Fungitopia citizens to partake in the art and science of mushroom cultivation. But by night, he transforms into an educator, sharing scientific insights and expertise through his podcast. Mike O'Geeky's mission reaches far beyond the city limits, serving as a beacon of authenticity and optimism. As Fungitopia's protector from its unsavory characters, you better believe it, Mike O'Geeky stands ready to illuminate the path for those seeking a brighter future. Love it. Let's open this thing up. All right. I don't know if I got a full deck. Um, well, a lot of people have told me that in my life, but I don't know if this is a full deck. There, I got a few cards. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they, they, they were just feeding my ego. Look at all. It's just... It's just a bunch of Michael Geeky cards. All right. So maybe we'll have to give away some of these, you know, uh, some of these will have to get tossed into some of my new Patreon supporters, into some of my sterilizers that go out. Um, we'll, we'll have to get some out of there. Oh, and check it out. The first card, the first card they sent me after my card. Shady vendors, guys. Shady vendors. Got to watch out for shady vendors. Always. We got, what else? We got law enforcement. Yeah, hopefully we don't got to worry about that too much. Um, you know, we had old Dennis McKenna on. We, we, we got his brother Strain, okay. What else we got? We got a bunch. All right, here's some of my homeboys. All right, we got the one and only Dichotomous Keys. Who we got? We got the homie Dave Wombat. We got the legend. I don't think it's actually Al Pacino, but we got Pasty White. We got a bunch here. Who else do we got? We got the homie Billy Golden Teacher. 92nd Mycology. I didn't get everybody. I think it looks like I kind of got some of the people that have been on the show. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the Gates man himself, James Cruz. Anyway, these are cool, man. These are well done. These are well done. Love it. Uh, I think he said the 23rd, he's getting the full deck. And uh, we're going to definitely do uh, a show um, or maybe I'll just do like some separate content uh, where maybe I can get old Jeff Karras over here, happy hyphae, and, and we sit down and play a game and we see how the gameplay goes. And then I, what else he got here? And then we got, oh, I like this. We got a Halo card. Where are we? Come on. There we go. Halo. I like it. Very cool. Already. This is already trading for like 30 bucks on, on, on eBay, guys. Anyway. Shout out to Stealthy Spores. Look them up. Get ready. Um, I am definitely excited about getting a chance to, to play the game. Uh, when I had my first kid, we, we played a lot of Pokemon. Uh, second kid, not so much. Third kid, I'm hoping to get get him him into it as well. Uh, but yeah, I like I like these card games. They're fun. Um, and uh, you know, once they're live, I think if you do the promo code Geeky, um, he gives me some some cut of the sales. I'm gonna take all the money. Uh, anybody that uses my promo code, all that money is gonna go to a nonprofit. Maybe. Maybe tonight I'll I'll be able to come up with with a maybe somebody will have an idea of a nonprofit that 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 profit can go to. Uh, we'll 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 see what we can figure out tonight. But yeah, like I don't need that money. That you know. Uh, but I would love for you guys to use my promo code, and I would love to be able to give some money to to a worthy cause. So let's you'll be hearing more from me when those cards are up. What else I got? I think that's it. I think it's time. Sorry, I got to get this box out of the way. It's my OCD. All right. So if you guys know anything about growing cubes, you know that there's this other mushroom that frequently gets talked about. 
the word FAE usually gets included when you're talking about it. And some people go, yeah, easy to grow just like cubes. Other people go, I can't do it. I don't know what my problem is. Tonight's your night, guys. We're, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about natalensis. We're going to talk about why it's a special cultigen, why you might want to grow it if you haven't. Um, and we're going to talk to some of the biggest fans of natalensis I know, uh, the Michael Mama. So let's pull them on. All right. Hey, Geeky. Yeah. Uh, what's up? What's up? All right. Let me turn this little uh, display name off. There we go. That That's good. How are you guys doing? You guys back from your 18 hour or your 16 hour road trip? <laughs> what, thanks how? for thanks for having us on. Oh, you're again. welcome. Uh, my my pleasure. Yeah, you, you know it's going to be many times. It's going to be many times because here's how it goes. Cool people doing cool things probably going to be on the show more than once. Speaking of which, we want to come have a game night with you. Yeah, let's do that. Game. Yo, yeah. I'm ready, man. I hope there's somebody out there that's like good on the computer side of this and reaches out to these guys and says, Hey, you want a mobile app? Let's do it. That would be super cool. Oh yeah. If and imagine they need to, if, they need to oh yeah. It, they it need to add a Michael fun. Mama's car to that deck. Well, I'm so thinking. check this out guys. <laughs> check this out. It's going to be just like Pokemon. It's going to be just like magic, the gathering, like every season there's going to be new decks. So, right. you know, this ain't the, this is just the first deck. This is not the last deck. There's a lot of people in this community. Um, I can't imagine the Michael Mamas might not be getting a card sometime soon. Would not be surprised. That'd be very fun. Anyway, we'll then the real thing is, do you each get your own card or? No, no. Are you, no. are you a, a we're, duo we're a card? Team. Okay. We're a team. I like it. I like it. Yeah. We've been together uh, 19 years in April. Yeah, you're you're you got me and my wife beat. I think we're a little over fifteen here now. Um, yeah, it's a long time. My wife is not on my card. I don't even know if she'd want to be on my card, but yeah. Okay, so you guys, if it, just for stealthy spores reference, guys, uh, duo card. Got to start. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the the Michael Romance cards, right? We got got the Medici's could get a card. Oh yeah, this is a whole nother. This is a whole nother tone right another here. Line. Yeah, I like yes, it. I like it too. All right. Um, so let's do this. I know you sent me a bunch of photos, but why don't you just give everybody a little bit of a background about what pulled you into this community in the first place, some of your early grows and kind of get us to your, you know, the night that Natalensis walked into the room and you guys were both smitten. Get us there. Well, Sure. Um, Diane, uh, Mama D and I, um, she, uh, we both got COVID at the end of um, 2020, 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2019. I know that. Yes. No, it was at uh, 2021, at the end of 2021. And um, so 2022, which was two years ago, we were really sick. Like both of us have asthma we've got fibromyalgia we have arthritis we've got all these other um anti-inflammatory or inflammatory issues and we got really really sick and we were like couldn't get out of bed for a month and um it took us a long time to get better i was working with my gastroenterologist and the covid brain fog was really bad my lungs were bad. My gut was bad. So he was working on my gut. But every time I had a video call with him and same thing with Diana, with her doctor, when we were having video calls with our doctors, they were telling us um, they really didn't know what they could do for us. So um, let's see. Long story short. We, oh. Yeah, he, he put me on. He thought I had... Um, he thought I had uh, microplots in my brain. And so he put me on uh, blood thinners and tried to get my brain to work a little better. Cause when I was talking to him on the computer for my appointments, I couldn't even come up with words. I couldn't have a conversation. It was really bad. So um, he put me on the blood thinners that didn't help. He put me on a bunch of different supplements that didn't help. And so finally he just said, there's nothing else I have for you. The only thing I can think of is microdosing psilocybin. 
he said, there's a paper out by the National Institutes of Health. And he said, um, maybe microdosing psilocybin would help your brain. And I got off that call and I talked to Mama D and I've been clean and sober for over 40 years. And she's been clean and sober for over 25 years. And we're like, uh, no, we did mushrooms when we were teenagers and we're not going to start, start eating mushrooms now. And a couple of weeks went by and it just kept coming up in our periphery. People were talking about it. A friend of ours was take, was a uh, microdosing psilocybin for her depression. And then we started watching TV shows and documentaries and stuff like this. And after a couple of weeks, we just decided that at this point in our life, we didn't want to go on for the rest of our lives, not with having our brains functioning the way they were functioning. I couldn't work. Yeah. It was bad. And I was doing a deep dive into a lot of the research papers, trying to see if there was any real, you know, substance to, to even trying it. And, um, <clears throat> which was not easy given that we were still kind of walking around foggy, but, um, yeah, we started reading the research and we saw a couple of papers, one of which was the Natalensis um, study they'd done a while back. And so once we kind of saw that, we were like, yep, we got to do it. And then I, then, so I called my doctor back, had an appointment with him and I was like, okay, we want to try this because we just can't go on like this. And I said, where do I get some? And he said, well, that's the thing. It's <laughs> illegal and you can't get any. And so we're trying to put our heads he together. Did help us dose it though. Yeah. He said, he gave us some ideas. Get some, he said, this is, how what, you, this is how you should start microdosing it. So <clears throat> he was really awful with that. So then we're sitting here and I'm like, I know what we should do. We should call our son who lives on our farm with us in a tiny house with his girlfriend. So I called up my son and I was like, if somebody wanted to microdose some psilocybin, where would they get it? And he said, I got some right here, mom. You want me to bring it in? And I was like, yes. So he brought it in. And about 10 days later of microdosing, my brain was about 90% better. It was such a huge improvement. We knew that was what was going on. So we had him get a whole bunch more for us, but we really didn't even know what we were getting. And we were really concerned about taking something from somebody we didn't know. So then Mama D's like, how hard can this stuff be to grow? And she's just, <laughs> she's a researcher. So she got on the internet and started researching. And I already read enough papers that it was, you know, I was like, there's so much more to this than we even know. And, um, and then I got, you know, then I started seeing, I started seeing people, we, we started getting involved in the the Facebook communities and things like that. And um, it was just, it was like all this information was coming in and it was it, like, it was meant to be. It was evident that yeah. there was something out there that we had no clue was there and, and it was amazing. And so that's when um, we got into the deep dive. We went down the rabbit hole. We said, we really need to figure this out. We, we said, we, we don't need this disposable <laughs> income. Yeah, if we had somebody right. to spend this disposable income on. Right. So, and then Amazon started showing up by the truckloads. Right. So, and then, and then we started growing. And it's like the mushrooms loved us. We, we had success right off the bat. We followed trusted tech. We actually took instruction and did what we were supposed to do. And, and next thing you know, we were, we were growing mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, so here's what I really love. I, I had somebody in in a, a some random post this week made some kind of like, well, you know, Geeky and I started at the same time and he just, you know, it's a different era and, you know, it's so easy these days. And I'm just like, wow, dude, like we all know this. It is a different era. And that's amazing. You still have to do the research. You, you still, still got to do the research. You still got to do the work. You still got to listen. Yep. You still got to try, but it needs to be easier. This isn't back in exactly. the day. It was for kids tripping balls. It is something yeah. else now. And the need is too great. It needs yeah. to be easy to grow. It People needs to need be medicine. People need medicine. Yes. And also we are looking at an avalanche of people with long COVID issues. Oh. And if, and the doctors don't have anything for them. When yeah. I go on my long COVID support group, they're like, oh, we're trying this and we're trying this and this isn't working and this isn't working. And 
and people are disabled. They can't work. They can't yeah. think. They're, they, mm -hmm. Their lives are destroyed. And then we meet somebody like that and we're like, hey, have you tried this? And they're desperate and they try it. And next thing you know, they're functioning. So our whole thought know? at that point was, why doesn't everybody have access to this medicine? And what can we do to make sure everyone has access to this medicine? Right. And that's how yep. we just we just decided to we needed to get out, get busy and figure this out. Which is why we love your podcast because you're it's why we get along. Thing. That's yeah. why we get along. We see it exactly There's the so same much motivation way. Yes. from your, yeah. your shows and your people. And it's like, we get together and we motivate each other. And I yeah. think. And the connections and the connections. Yeah. 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 It's, we've made, you know, we're, we're friends with Lolo now and, um, uh, like real friends, real life. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. And, uh, and night here. That's we, like, we yeah. have to do a game night. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. have, we have, um, we just adore these people in our life now. And our life is very full with that. But as far as going back to the Natalensis, so Diana's it's okay. Yeah, it's Diana. Diana just started doing some research into it. And then she said, um, she said, there's a mushroom out there and I think it would really help with um, inflammation. And I think we need to grow this. So she gets online and orders from an inoculate multi spore syringe, yeah, which I just was looking at the logbook when I logged it into my logbook and I put we, it in. We it wouldn't as, do that today. The but... Liquid culture. I was like, oh yeah, that was a that was a lot of liquid culture. That was MSS. <laughs> and so, and everything I read was like, it's really hard to grow. You gotta, you know, it takes special everything. Right. And so I literally, um, I must have inoculated twenty plates. I must have put, I don't know. There was, just a, lot, say, we there was a, a lot of bags of grain and, lot, and a lots of tubs. It all grew. But what happened is we went on that trip afterwards. Did we go to, we went to Arizona. Oh yeah. Yeah. We yeah. went to Arizona. So we left one of our son's friends watching our house and we said, okay, we'd like you to watch the mushrooms while we're gone. I'm going to show you how to harvest them. So I showed him how to harvest them. And then we left and then we came back and he said, there is no way I could ever keep up with this. There's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look <laughs> to at what my tubs. wife did one time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, you can't and trust so anybody had, with them. We had all, so we, we didn't expect the tubs of gnats to grow and we at came all. back and then there was all these tubs of all and these they gnats. Kept, and it kept, it kept and coming. They, yeah. Kept every, coming. every five like, to seven days. Insane. Here's some more. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we had, um, we we've had, done a lot of research. We had, had, a, lot of, had a lot of gnats and efficacy. Yeah. But um, but when we started microdosing them and taking them, they helped immediately our fibromyalgia symptoms. They made such a huge difference that both of us went off of our antidepressants and uh, Mama D went off of all Everything. her pain medication for fibromyalgia. She was on low dose naltrexone. She was on other I struggled, struggled for years with um, chronic pain issues. Yeah. And it was kind of one of those things where I was young, healthy, active, athletic. And then boom, one day for whatever reason, I just started having pain problems. And I then ha I've had that the, day. I know the response to that was, you know, they put me on, um, I was on narcotics for quite some time and I was trying to keep those to a minimum because I hated the way I felt. And then that, you know, it was like that whole pain, depression, and it was just the spiral I was in and I couldn't get out of it. And yeah. Then, so then the depression comes, so then they had the depressants. Right. And, and then it's just one thing. And then they isn't just Isn't it give cool how that more, works? They, more medication. Yeah. At the end, you're just on everything. Effects. Yeah. More yeah. medication for the side effects of yes. what you're on. Yeah. And but, so yeah. now with now, we, can't take, we don't take ibuprofen. We don't take, we Tom, rarely no, yeah. take a Tylenol. Of course, when she broke her leg. Yeah. Little pain medication when i fell off the roof and broke my back yeah pain medication but eight out of ten or higher you got every right to be on right the, the right. good stuff yeah. but we didn't need to be on that on a regular basis so no. that so then we started talking about this miracle natalensis and then next thing you know we're talking to people who have cancer and people who have long covid and people who have fibromyalgia and people who have chronic pain and we're like have you tried this one it's different. And then, so I, yeah, and that I've was, actually, I get, I get, I kind of alternate. 
I think I, for me personally, I feel like they must act in my body differently um, or act on different receptors. This is my theory. My theory is, is that it, they affect different receptors in a way. So I can pretty much microdose on the daily and I micro and I alternate my peanuts with my um, cubensis. Yeah. So that's, you know, instead of taking daily pain medication or being on daily antidepressants, it's like, I just kind of just go with how I feel. If I feel like I'm having pain or whatever, then I'll microdose. And, um, and we, I do periodically macro, which is also been beneficial as far as, um, you know, Everything. figuring out the secrets of the universe, but, yes. you know, but on the daily, it's definitely the microdosing that helps me. And um, yeah, I'm sorry. I probably yeah. got so, track. Okay. So <clears throat> back to the Natalensis. So what started happening was um, we, we got hooked up with Lauren, a hippie and a veteran. Mm -hmm. And um, we had this picnic at the farm. We all got together. We were all instant friends. And we started talking about this idea that we had that was what if we could get this medicine to the people who actually needed it. And it was something that you said on your show once you were talking to Yoshi and you said, what if the people could see that they could grow mushrooms immediately and then learn the tech behind it, but first give them the success of having the mushrooms and getting yeah. the medicine to them. Mm -hmm. And then their brains are working better. So we woke up on the solstice. We had this epiphany and we just said, we need to get medicine to the people who need it right away. So we came up with this um, ready to grow kit, colonized grain, bag of sub, pair of gloves, roll yeah. tape, everything, couple of tubs. And so and an instruction video, an instruction video. And so we started sending these to people through Lauren at Hippie and a Veteran, the, the veterans that needed this medicine so they could grow their own. And actually we started, we put some out with the Medici's. Um, the Medici's have actually offered to uh, participate in helping. We had multiple growers offer to yeah, participate. Yeah. So, but, so we so we started putting those kits together and sending them out. And we were sending out what be be positive and golden teacher yeah. and stuff like that. And then we're like, you know, grain grain transfer for peanuts works much faster. Let's just do that, and they're easy to grow. So we always have lots of it, and we always have lots of it. So we started putting the peanuts in those kits. So this leads us to the story of, okay, we put the peanuts in the kit. There was a gal that came on ladies of mycology group and she put a post on there. She was desperate for medicine, didn't know how to grow, needed the medicine like right now. And, um, yeah. Like, can I just pause? I send... So th yes, that right there, this is what a lot of people are missing the mark on. Some people need the medicine. I'm going to try not to get, get emotional here. They need it right fucking now. Right. So if you're an asshole online, if you're like, oh, you're dumb. You don't know what you're doing. I'm so smart because I've been growing eight years. You're, you could potentially make that person walk out the door and never change their life. And that shit is on you, the asshole who does that. Sorry, I get real upset about this because no, the, there are so many people who and, need this right now right so yes but please keep going I, I cannot believe that everything happens as it should when it should and you know there's um you never know why someone doesn't get what they need the moment that it's they yeah. think they need it so but i mean okay i like that i like that idea so to be fair yeah, some like, people die and they don't get it some right. people and bad it, things happen and someone could have well, intervened so i still stand I by my i, did, I get it I everything know, I happens about, for a reason I but when mm. they they made it a schedule one that right there was when that's when that was crime when, happened yeah that's like sure. the biggest yeah. crime against humanity as right. far as i'm concerned yes because it's like when we yep. started my or taking microdoses and it it changed our lives i'm like why would they not allow this to be out there for everybody that's freaking crime it is it's how many people, how many people have died in the last 50 years especially alcoholics i mean this yeah. is couldn't be yeah. revolutionary medicine for that it is but, um but it is instead yeah. of getting lost in all of that and it's, i think it's for me for us i believe it's easier to just to say you know what 
what's done is done. Let's, what can we do yeah. now? What can we, how can we make a difference? We and can, we can work on decriminalization. We can work on destigmatization, destigmatization, and we can work on getting grow kits to people who need the medicine right away. And I think there's a difference between somebody getting medicine immediately and somebody getting a grow kit that they actually have to invest a, some time with and do some, it's while it's growing, they've got right. a chance to do some research and how am I going to take this? What is this medicine going to do? Just educate themselves instead of here's a baggie of mushrooms. There, there, and there's just some energy that comes yeah. with cultivating the mushrooms itself. That's a therapy in its own. And so here they get this grow kit. They've got to watch the video, put it together. And so far, everybody's been growing some mushrooms. Yeah, we um, in the beginning, <clears throat> I I was like, we're going to give away a hundred kits. So I was like, what? I was like a hundred kits. And so, and um, nobody thought that that was, they were like, well, that's kind of a lot. Don't you think? But we're over halfway through that number, probably yes. at about 60, 65. And um, we just decided to buy the stuff ourselves and put it together, not rely on anybody else. We just want people to get the medicine. So yeah. that's what we've been doing. And I, and I believe if it's supposed to be a cause that it's, if it's a worthy cause, we'll all work out how to make it keep going. Yeah. And yeah. so far, I think it's working out pretty well. So yeah. it's working out we'll great. See. This is good. I will tell. This, so will like, tell. I mean, I don't know how many tens of thousands of people served in the military right. and, you know, came out scathed, came out very scathed. Yeah. So that's that, uh, you know, you and 50 other people could start doing the same thing. We probably still would just be hitting the tip of the iceberg. But at the right. end of the day, something is something, right? It's any, any movement towards this. You're part of that impetus. You are shining a light on the need in a way that, man, most of our society, we ain't got time. We got Netflix to watch. We got scrolling to do, you know, we don't got time for this or we got to make money off our fruit. So I commend you guys, heroes, champions, advocates, uh, everything, yeah. everything that- no. the, the mushrooms told us to do it. So <laughs> yeah, we just fine, listen cool. to the mushrooms. Cool. <laughs> okay, so you worship the mushroom just like me and like half the people <laughs> listening to the show, great. But yes, you are doing, dude, you guys hear me say it every week. What's the What's the one other thing you can do above doing all the stuff for yourself? You guys are doing that. Go. It's 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 great. It's awesome. Well, I, I, and it's a lot. Of, I mean, you know, it's not all for unselfish reasons. It's like it's a lot of work to sure. to cultivate some of these varieties and do what we do. And I would much rather have people knowing how to do it themselves. So that's was yeah. part of my motivation as well. I'm like, I don't want to work that. I'm near retirement. I'm like, I want to help you, but I need. I'd rather help you help yourself. Right. And so. Um, oh, I had another point. I was in there. I got lost, lost my train of thought, but yeah, I would rather help people help themselves so that that's why, that's why we're active in the ladies of mycology. And we're really trying to teach other people how to grow and so they can, if you want to learn, everybody should have their own medicine. Every grandma, every, okay. That's what I was going to say <laughs> is like, yeah, I want, you know, it's, I want it to be like the sourdough starter of the elderly. And it's like, if you know, if you have the start to what you need, you can do this yeah. pretty easily. And so, and I think enough cultivators could probably get the starters out there in a way that they would be affordable. And, and if you, if we do that, how are they going to arrest everybody? How are they everybody going to with a tub? So that's, that's they don't even this. want to. They don't even want no, to. No, they don't. They don't. They, no, they don't. got a big fennel problem. And they got, can't. Yeah. They got to focus like, on that. I when, mean, you know, yeah. When the president's grandma's growing mushrooms, they'll probably decriminalize it everywhere and be like, there you know you what? Go. My grandma's been doing it for ten years. So new agenda. How do we get the president's grandmother? Well, all our presidents are Wait, 80 years old now, say, so all their yeah, grandmas no, are dead, sure but yeah, we need some younger step, presidents. Have to devote in a younger president, I guess. Yes, how we so, get a younger so, president in. So one of the one of the 
gals showed up in the ladies of mycology and said she was really desperate for this medicine. So I popped onto DMs and and had a conversation with her. And she had some um, veteran connections and um, her and her husband really needed the medicine. So um, we popped a grow kit in the mail to them and we sent them some peanuts. And then I didn't hear from her for four weeks. And then I got a message with a picture of a tub Mm -hmm. that I couldn't see through. And she was like, are these ready to pick yet? And I was (laughs) like... Well, what is going on in that tub? I, I said, can you open that tub and take a picture of the inside? And she did. And then I just. All right. Yeah. So now you, you, now you've enticed everybody. So let's do this. Let's pull up some pictures. Let's get us to that tub. And and then let's, let's pull on uh, some other guests here to, to be a part of telling the story. Let me pull that off. Okay. So I'm going to pull up uh, some. Some early photos. So this, so what, where are we at here with your, your peanut journey? Right at the very beginning when we were doing snack packs. Okay. We're just, we got so much grain. We're like putting it in everything, every container we can find. So. Yeah. Yeah. And their noodles, noodly, noodly. Then we're like, do you think maybe we should use liners? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) It wouldn't hurt. So yeah, this was like early 2020. We're like, we oh look, a big one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that, that's go. when we came home from the trip. Potluck dinner like, right there. Yeah. The yeah. fresca, my favorite. Love, love me some fresca. All right. So this is this is early. This is in the beginning. Yep. So obviously yep. yeah. and now- we had tubs and tubs and tubs and tubs of this. Yeah. That, um, that was uh, two almost two years ago. Yeah. And yeah, okay. um and because we we really liked the medicine. We just kept going with it. And then we started seeing these different variations coming off yeah. of it. And that's, it was last, it was last <clears throat> February. We started seeing a, um, what we call the fancy hat nap. We call it fancy hat nap at the time it had, it was, had curly edges on it and it had a frilly, frilly. All right. gills. I think I, I have those. Hold on. Let me see if I could pull yeah. these okay. up for you guys. I got to do a different way because StreamYard wouldn't let me upload this one for some reason. So let me let me get this one a little fixed. Uh, Those are just some of the other gnats that we were that were growing there. So we, we just recently. Oh no. Yeah. Got, so this are okay. So the yeah. Okay. Walk us through these real quick. We'll get through these. So and then... um, we just recently got uh, green cap gnats from Humble Brews and a believe a Jason. Uh, I believe they came from Ryan Thompson originally. Shout out to Ryan Thompson. Great grower. Yep. 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 So, um, and we just joined the psilocybin Netlensis group. Um, That's a great group if you're interested in growing gnats. They're a great group on Facebook. And so we started growing the green caps. Um, If you go to the next picture, that's green caps on the right, Netlensis on the left, or regular natalensis on the left. And at this point, we still, we weren't giving them enough FAE. FAE. We like um, to do neglect tech, dub tub, unmodified dub tub, six quarts. We'll do 20 quarts. But um, we had a gnat problem uh, a couple of months ago. So your gnats got gnats? Yeah, yeah, gnats got gnats. Gnats got gnats. Um, so gnats squared. D was going in the mushroom room whenever there was gnats in there when I wasn't watching and she would pull off some of the tape to give them some more FAE. And, um, but then when we got gnats, we were like, okay, we can't do that anymore. So we worked out a spacer thing and we're using spacers Mm -hmm. on the tubs now so we can still keep the tub completely closed. So we, we close it up after we plant it. We, uh, wait till we see pins, we put some spacers in it, but we keep the tub completely closed and we're really into the neglect tech. We just go in there once a day with a flashlight, look inside the tub, see what's going on. Right. And then when they're ready to harvest, open it up and harvest it. Um, and then heavy flush or heavy, heavy mist and tape it back up. And, but now that we've put the spacers in there, we're getting flushes every three to four days instead of every five to seven days. So this oh, is wow. a one we just grew. We just love the color on that. It's real pretty teal. That's a green cap. And calling that the galaxy green cap. Yeah. This we one, have a tendency to give nicknames. To nicknames. But um, it's not, not a new no. ISO or anything. 
Um, this is back when we were doing a lot of noodles. That's a black cap gnat that's very noodly. Um, then we started giving them more air and they got bigger and taller, which is nice. There so there's, um, the black caps are beautiful. There's the underside of that. And then um, Buster Dre was talking to us about using water crystals. So we did a water crystal experiment. This was last March. And um, they're reptile water crystals that you can hydrate. And so we put a bunch of that in one sub and then ran an, a regular tub right next to it. And in the end, we got a little bit more volume out of the ones with the water crystals, but it was more trouble than we wanted to. So we stopped that experiment. It was F A F O. Yep. You got a F A F O or you never F O. Right. Goes, yeah. And and we love how gnats look on plates. Isn't that just beautiful? They, they're 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 wild. Oh yeah. They're vigorous. They they're are. more tomatose, but they're poofy and beautiful and yep. gorgeous. We love them. All right. Yeah. Now let me now let me get to your okay, fancy so, ones that those were so I think, the, the ones. yeah so then last february these fancy gnats started coming up and so we started pursuing those and they were um they were different yeah right. they were we <clears throat> uh, fancy yeah <laughs> so they had some thicker stipes um they were yeah. had a pretty cap that curled up and was frilly. Yeah, and I think our earlier uh, fancy gnats were more, we thought that it was environmental. We started we having these little, we called them gnats with hats and all this other stuff. And then, um, but then they started happening a they little started, more consistently. And, and, yeah, like, oh. and they were branching off and we could be running um, a, a regular gnat tub right next to a fancy gnat tub because we were trying to isolate it and we were getting consistently the fancy gnats in the fancy gnat tub and regular gnats in go. the regular tub. There you go. So that's when we figured it might really be genetic. Look at that. Ooh, loving that. That is a sexy gill shot right there. Now this then, one look is at this. not Even actually. <laughs> a, oh no, it's not a, this is not a mono. Oh, no, I was doing uh, Ed's uh, drag and grab. That was the plate that was after. A, no, that wasn't drag and grab. Yes, it that, was. That was the cabin. No, technique. no, that was a drag it looks and grab. Swirly. I did. Yeah, looks I did a drag and grab and had pulled some. Trying to the thing with uh, these gnats trying to find a a mono out of all that. Or they're they're just they're fast too aggressive, they're aggressive, man. Oh my and, god, you'd yeah, have to no, watch them of, like a hawk. I right. was, and everything that I took was just beautiful mycelium. Obviously, Dye. not Dye. Dye. Yeah, obviously Dye carry on. Dye carry on. So this, so this one just I, it just looks so pretty. I liked cool. it because it was it, it looks three D, and it's hard to appreciate in that picture. But there's actually like. Because the way I swirled it through the agar, there's um, like it like pedaled up, mm -hmm. so it had kind of like this different three D layer look to it, which was was pretty cool. It. So, but yeah, Dig it. not a mono, definitely. All right, so now here we are, the final lead in to this tub. Now, so this tub was one of the sixty plus veteran <laughs> kits that you sent out. So yes. as far as you knew, was this a fancy cap now or was, was this? Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. were we were sending okay. out we were sending out fancy. Okay. So you know you sent genetics. out a fancy nat cap and then and we just showed everybody on the show what them fancy caps were looking like and then your your newfound friend grows her first tub yeah. a month right. later and, since, and she sends you these photos. Right. And I'm like, what is what going on? What do we got in, in there? What's in there, corner? ladies? Yeah, what's yeah. in there? Let's get a better view here. And then she Ooh. sends me this other one. I was like, there's something. I, please Wait, open it by up. By the way, so these were the first two photos she sent you? Yeah. That's a classic beginner move right there. 
they always send you these photos that make you mad that are like, I can't see anything I, in this I photo. I told her not to open it until right, she was I ready know. to harvest yeah. it. So she's like, are these ready to harvest? Wow, and, I love and it. She did, so she did, she did exactly what she was yes, supposed I to, love it. told her to do. I love it. All right. But then here we go. The lid is off. The cat is out of the bag. What do we got here? Did Dave Wombat look at this tub? I mean... This is know. that level of weirdness right here for sure. Look yeah, at those. Yeah. My goodness. And it's with the exception of it looks like one, it's it looks like everything. Every one of yeah, them did yeah. that. Except for that that one in the about it's two that o'clock. One. It's that one yeah. stubborn. Yep. All right. So this was Friday night. She sends me these pictures on Friday afternoon. She sends me these pictures and I'm mm -hmm. like, where does this gal live again? Okay. She lives in Kennewick. And that's how, how far, far from you guys away like is that a day. And I'm like, okay, it's over East of the mountains. It's four hour drive. Oh, it's only four hours. I thought it was eight hours each way. I thought you guys, no, was, you guys were at a level. Be, eight hour okay. round trip drive. Okay. All right. I, but, I can get done with that. I was, I, I thought y'all did 16 hours. I was God. like, man, the mamas are, I would have, I would have I believe you. So believe the first you. thing I did was, um, D was it, you were at work that day on Friday mm -hmm. and I'm trying to reach her at work to talk to her about this. I'm like, what should I do about this? Should I go get this? And she, I couldn't reach her at work cause she was at the hospital and they don't give her a phone apparently. Yeah. They don't <laughs> and, like that. They don't like that. And so I text, I messaged B and I'm like, B, are you down for a road trip? And she's like, when? I'm like, now. And she said, okay, where are we going? So as it turned out, it, we I decided, okay, it's two o'clock on a Friday. I don't want to leave the farm for all these hours. D isn't going to be home till after midnight, maybe tomorrow. So then I finally got a hold of her and I said, we have to go get these mushrooms. Is it okay if I take off with B tomorrow and we go get these mushrooms? And she's like, yeah, I'll watch the farm. Just go. So work things out with B. And then I talked to Lori and she was so gracious. And she, um, she actually agreed to drive to our round trip from her place to meet us part way. It still ended up taking B and I nine hours, but if she wouldn't have made the, if she wouldn't have met us part of the way, it would have been 11. So, wow. yeah, so we, um, B and I got in the car with a bunch of snacks on Saturday morning, first thing and headed for with the puppy dog. It's yeah. like, it's like Thelma and Louise part three guys right here. Yeah, I love for it. Sure. I love it. So, so, yeah, so how about we do this? Let's, you know, we're talking about yeah. these people. Let's pull them on. Let's, let's hear the story. Absolutely. All right. Let me pull this up. Okay. So first up, I'm going to pull. This is the woman who, you know, is the reason this entire episode happened. Lori. Hello. What's up? So happy I, to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, first off, I love your natural wood um, furniture behind you. That's very thank cool. I dig it. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you for being here. Um, I love the fact that you are... You grew like you've grown one tub of fruit. You already have an isolation that's caused, you know, serious growers to drive an entire day to go get, uh, you're, you're batting a thousand. Yeah. Um, you definitely have the, the mushrooms on your side so far. This is awesome. Um, yeah. why don't you tell us from your perspective, you know, how, how'd you, you know, how did this whole process work for you? You, 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 you get your kit. How'd you get your kit? How, what was it like? How, I really want to know how it felt for you. The whole, as much as you want to talk about what brings you up to this first tub. Wow. It's a little overwhelming for me. Uh, I too get, um, extremely emotional, but usually mine's, uh, with a bunch of tears. So I'm going to try to get through this. My excitement, enthusiasm about it, um, was inspired by the mamas and their uh, support to help me get medical for. Uh, I um, wanted to help 
a couple of conditions, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, mm. sorry, arthritis, um, my mental health. I do still struggle with PTSD symptoms and I don't typically lean toward depression, but the pain <clears throat> that I endure does cripple me quite a bit to uh, like non-existent. Like, you know, I get up and I do minimal basic life skills and I used to be a av avid athlete and run and, um, do things that I enjoyed hike and, um, fish and mm -hmm. boat. And, and that's pretty put a damper on things. I am a Nana. I have three beautiful grandsons. I have three gorgeous children and I am happily married. Uh, but that all was impacting my relationships and not being able to physically, you know, get down on the ground anymore and endure um, playtime was, right. in, you know, making my, my pain so um, unbearable. So they uh, offered this kit to me and I was overwhelmed with the, the generosity. And then I was thrilled that I was going to get this opportunity with just my inquiry just a question. How do I go about this? What do I do? Who's a good resource? And she was like, Oh, I just, I just send it. We to got you. you. Yep. Yeah, I got I love it. And, and, a, and a link to a video that I could just watch over and over and over again at my own comfort level in my own home and the questions I might have, but it was all spelled on in the video and the instructions were so clear that I, I mean, you can't screw it up. Yes. I might, I might have, but I didn't on this because it was so great. It's great. Now, and, can I ask you, so how did the idea of giving psilocybin a try, how did that hit your radar? I'm, I'm always curious about this. So I have a veteran friend that lives here locally in town and he had given me a microdose to try. And, um, it's just a small little envelope that I was supposed to take a, a dose every day for to help my pain and my because that's where i'm mostly disturbed um resting is almost impossible so yeah. get the sleep underway and and i did the first night i slept the whole night through which i don't even remember the last time that was without oh, the medicine. it's amazing dude it is amazing as it is amazing and oftentimes my husband's reaching over trying to console me and comfort me and find me where i'm at and that's a beautiful thing to have, but you still have to get up and try to be successful the next day. It impacts your mood. It impacts, you know, your, your thought process, how you, how you go about your thinking pattern. And usually I'm not feeling so great. So I like to cram a bunch of junk in my face because, you know, I'm already feeling crappy. So maybe this piece of chocolate's going to help. And Never it does <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> if it didn't, you would stop doing it. It does. It helps a little bit. It's it okay. sure helps my mood. It, yeah. But it makes me sicker because then all yep. of that yeah. helps my inflammation factors go yep. up. Mm -hmm. That's never a great thing. So I got a, a small dose from a friend and uh, then he said, uh, that's no longer available. You need to start growing on your own. I was like, oh, but I, I, I don't know how. And I need some some skills. And uh, I started watching the, the mama's video before my kit came. And I was like, oh wow, they like break it down to the point where, I, I mean, then, I'm, you know, you get in the in the group, you start reading the inquiries and, and the banter back and forth and, you know, the, the talk, the shop talk, you know, what is a cube? <laughs> right. um, and, but you, know, you get there, you get there, watch in, in, in a year, you'll be back on, you'll be You've, you know, isolated 14 new, new, uh, amazing yep. cultigens and you never yeah. know. Yeah. You'll get it. You'll get the language. I do have a, a green thumb. Uh, you know, I have small house plants that I enjoy growing and that's been fun, but this is, this is, is now taken the, the front row, um, priority of life and, um, their generosity. And I, I I'm thrilled to be able to make this as accessible as I can because of the stigmatism and the negative stigmatism I know. Um, behind it. I, you know, I, I, I'm not a veteran, but I did give birth to one and I do know the, the factors behind them serving and, and how that impacts their day. 
and their life and yeah. um, trying to give them accessible medication that, you know, isn't the standards of the VA way. Uh, the Veterans Administration would put a huge kibosh on this and turn you into a, a user in a, in a negative capacity when I've never been more clear. There hasn't been a, a medicine that they put me on that I have felt this great. Yep. And it, in fact, it, it got to the point where um, the doctors have put me on a medicine that caused me to have a, a, a seizure in the middle of a store. And I woke up in the back of an ambulance with a traumatic brain injury. And I am still recovering from that. Um, but I think that this all could have been avoidable if I had excess access to this medicine in an earlier stage of, of this. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes you a little angry, doesn't it? Um, like what's the deal with that? Anyway, it's going to change. It is changing. And now Lori, along with the Michael mamas and old geeky and everybody else, right. We're all playing a part in this right now. And like the mama said, I mean, they try to arrest everybody if they really gave a crap, but they're just not, they're like, you know, fentanyl's killing too many people. And you know, uh, who was it, uh, that, that kid not too long ago got busted up in Vermont or Connecticut or wherever it was. He had a thousand bags. He wasn't growing for his mental health, right? Like he had a thousand bags. So let's, <laughs> if you're in your basement, if you got a couple grow kits, if you're just like me obsessed with, with, with this process now and, you know, use it for my own mental health. I'm yeah. not spending any time worrying about it. I can tell you that. No, I feel solid in yeah. this journey. I don't feel threatened. I don't feel fearful. I don't have a worry. Um, this is outside of my element joining something like this. But if I didn't have the medicine, I'd be all, you know, crunched up in a ball. That's awesome. Oh, so I, I can't talk to people about something I don't know anything about. But their their grace and their their support and now meeting you i'm so excited can't wait for this next chapter to keep opening and well so th the green thumb it's turning a little blue you might have a turquoise thumb you know we'll see now so i gotta ask you this so you yeah. had this tub yeah you had no clue what you had right you just Nothing. you're like well i don't you, did, you didn't know what, did you have an idea what these might look like? Did you see photos of, so you just knew something mushrooms and then look what you got. So if you, if you, some Google, weird looking mushrooms. Yeah. If you Google some of this picture things and you, you know, you're using the scientific word, uh, they don't, don't like, look like that. They yeah. don't like to show you those types of images nope. and Correct. sparse. I mean, I probably could have gone to a library, but that would be outside of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had no clue and literally I knew I was, I was looking into an opaque kind of a box going, what do I see? What is this? <laughs> now this, I don't know how much this will mean to you, but I have talked a lot recently about how, when you're growing mushrooms, right? All these spores create subtle little ch different children right and, and you never know what you're going to get till you grow it out okay. and there's just so much work to be done to find these unique different we call them cultigens varieties strains whatever you want to call them types you know breeds like for a dog right and so i think you just serve as a shining example of this idea that we've been talking about on the show here for a couple months which is Get the spores out there, get these, you know, wh whether if you're really lucky and you get the mamas to knock up a bag for you, uh, even better, but you'll get there. You'll be doing this yourself. You'll be knocking up your own bags. I cannot. Uh, I've, yeah. I've already planned on getting her another, she's getting another one from those fruits. Oh. I'm sending her another kit. She did such a good job I, with the one I sent her. Yes. I'm like, oh, gave, you got to have another one. I gave her a brand new kit when I met her and some extra <laughs> oh, of little course. goodies. Yes. I don't, we're, we're not going to let her stop. She's got to keep oh, going. Oh, no. Now. You yeah, can't. I just told her, do it again. Her first do flush, you can't just steal her first flush from her. I already know you took care of her. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's great. I'm excited. Um, I, I know that I, when I talk to people these days, my friends in, in town here um 
they they've maybe they've had an experience you know had some sort of trip experiences as a younger person oh. but no no microdosing experience and so they hear about it and they read about it it is definitely like hitting the mainstream and you can be at a party and you can say the word microdose and four people will hear it and come over and they, they run in on that conversation they want to hear about that why because i don't know we're getting sick of starbucks we're getting sick of cigarettes we're getting sick of drinking alcohol all the time and blowing out our livers yeah and this thing doesn't do that to you no i so, have no side effects that were negative yeah. if that it is great i was like wow look at me today where did this come from this is incredible it's amazing uh, i have taken care of many a patient that has rheumatoid issues um yeah it can be really debilitating i mean yeah. really debilitating so that you can eat a freaking mushroom <laughs> powder pill yeah. and feel like this i mean it must have the pfizers of the world shaking in their boots like <laughs> Oh my God, there goes our revenue stream. This is going to solve or improve a lot of things for a lot of people because man, and don't get me started on fibromyalgia and stuff like that, but there's a correlation between physical pain and then the way that the mind renders it. So yeah. my personal belief about this stuff is some of this chronic pain stuff has more to do with up here than it does right here. There is this component that triggers it, but that's why you can take a pill. And it, if you're Mama D, you get real lucky, you take a pill and you go, where to go? <laughs> Was this a trick? Am I on a TV show? Yeah. This can't, can't really just be this easy, right? But man, what it's doing up here to, to your brain, it's really unique. It's really special. It's very cool. I wish we knew more. I wish we knew more. I just We're fractured gonna. my fibula and, you know, it was a pretty painful experience, but it was nothing like I imagined. And it really was not, I mean, because you were microdosing, I was using mushrooms yeah. to kind of, mm -hmm. I would have rather use mushrooms than narcotics. Yeah. And it worked. I'm like, yeah. A little Tylenol, a little bit of tramadol, maybe. And, and the then... truth is, I don't know. So I broke my tibia and fibula. It was a real nasty break. I was non-weight bearing for two months or for, uh, for what was it? Not quite two months. And, uh, you know what it's, you can take the narcotics, but man, it, the only reason they make you feel better is because you just go freaking out. Right. Just go to La La Land. It doesn't actually do anything you for the sleep pain. for two months. Yeah, right. you just go to sleep. That's all you do, and then you wake up in pain again. It's like in the hospital when they're on their PCA pumps, right? They PCA okay. themselves with morphine until they go to sleep. Then they sleep for eight hours. They've not had any pain medicine in their system for eight hours. They wake up and they're screaming and yelling, and they press that button and they only get one milligram, and they're all mad and fuming. And that's why I hate PCA pumps. That's a separate story. <laughs> but yeah, that's, you know, that stuff, it doesn't work. The narcotics, sometimes you have to do it because people are in so much pain, but you need them to do something, you know, like, oh, you broke your leg, but I need you to move it anyway to take this x-ray. Cool. Narcotics save the day. Yeah. But any long-term pain situation, shit doesn't work. It is not, mm -hmm. it on, you only get used to it and then you go up and up and up and up. And like you're on MS cotton and you're on, then you're like, shit, let's try heroin. Let's try Suboxone. Let's try methadone. Let's like, ba 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 because you, and it, that cycle doesn't work. And here yeah, we and go. At least with shrooms, you know, you build your tolerance and then you just have to take a break. It just, you know, break. or it just stops working. It just stops yeah. working. It's like, yeah. you can take more if you want it. So, so yeah, yeah, it's, yep. it's just, I love it. I think that's great. All right. Miracle so, stuff. so we got to pull, uh, be saucy has been hanging out. She's been not saucy. She's been calm. She's been waiting in the green room, the virtual green room patiently. Um, let's bring on now. So I don't know. So if mama asks, are, are you Thelma? I'm going to go, I'm going to go Thelma. And then, so let's pull on your Louise here <laughs> for your road trip. All right. Welcome to the show. Uh, 
be saucy. What's up? Thanks, Geeky. Long time listener, first time caller. Love it. Love it. So happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Love the hair. Love the pendant. Love the tats. Thanks. Love the sweater. Love the stained glass in the back. Is it? Yeah. Oh, my father's. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. I I love a craftsman. I think that's that's amazing. He didn't make it. He just loved antiques. All right. (laughs) Well, then no credit to your dad. I know. My bad. None I, gave him, I gave him too much credit. But at least you <laughs> got some cool stained glass out of the deal. Absolutely. There we go. All I'm right. So, so let's get from you because, you, you know, I'm not in ladies in mycology, so I don't know any of this stuff. But but I hear you're, uh, you know, you're helping out. You're modding in there yeah. and uh, you're you're local to Michael Mamas. And so. Yeah. Tell me a yeah, little bit I, about uh, how you got in in LOM and how you met the mamas and, and then how you ended up, you know, cruising down the highway, picking up what might be a really cool new cultigen for for Natalensis. Right. Uh, so I joined Ladies Mycology last year and um, I moved to, you know, we're in Washington, so I live a little north of Seattle and um I don't really know many people up here. So uh, I was, I was going to move, I was going to move to Portland and I joined ladies of mycology. And then all of a sudden I see this post on there from Michael mama's about a camp out out here. And I was like, no way. And it's like an hour from my hometown. So I'm like, all right, well, this is pretty cool here. I'm in this like world renowned group and they're right here in my backyard. So I signed up for, and you didn't know that until the, until they announced that. Okay. No idea. So then they updated the post and they said, hey, we're going to have our picnic before this. And they ended up having that picnic that she referenced earlier where Uh uh, we talked to Lolo about the revolution. And uh, I I met a bunch of wonderful ladies there. And I remember I was telling them about this earlier. I remember uh, being at the farm and Dee has this leather room, which sounds way like worse like <laughs> naughtier than it actually is but d like used to make tack and stuff restores saddles <laughs> all right nice. all right yeah, all right. yeah. So, another another calls. crafts person i love it right, yes. right? so he's like oh do you want to see the leather room and i'm like just in awe of these two and i'm like will you be my friend and they're like you're in our house you're already our friend Aww. so uh it was right. great and then you know we went to the ladies of mycology camp out and i think that they were on your show after that and uh we just hit it off from there and you know i ended up not moving because i found my i found my family up here so i love that I love yeah that. they're 20 minutes from me and, uh, we have game nights all the time you'll have to come for a game night oh i'm coming well nam is going to be over that way next year in october so i'll be over there i'll probably have to not come a week year, earlier this year. or this year yeah 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 the, yeah. I have to come early or, or stay late and, and we'll definitely do all that fun stuff. Yes. Yeah, That'll please happen. do. So I got to okay. say this. Here's one thing I love. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm a white guy. I don't hate white guys, uh, but there are plenty of us in, in the mycology community. And if you watch my show, you're like, okay, cool. Kiki's got another white guy on. And that's fine. That's great. There are plenty of us in America, uh, but we don't own the space. And we don't, we don't have any special, you know, I can pee standing up, but that doesn't influence my ability to grow mushrooms. So I really can't tell you how amazing I think it is and special and important that you guys have a ladies of mycology Facebook group, that you're building a real world community, women teaching other women how to grow mushrooms. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, uh, you don't need geeky to mansplain it to you. You guys, you are in good hands with some of the growers over in LOM. You're, you're good. You're good. So you know, I think that's I love, great. I love going over to mama's house and it's not like sitting in our chairs and knitting. It's sitting there cleaning our albino. <laughs> <laughs> it's what? Oh, sitting there cleaning oh the albinos. That's so oh, it's <laughs> Grandma, can I have a circus peanut? No, but I got a you know, one of these fancy cat peanuts for you here. You could have a peanut. Okay, the joke is, wait, is Mama D always has pocket mushrooms. She's always got mushroom capsules in her pockets. So she's walking around and just handing them out to people. That's just That's amazing. Mama S is like, really? There's lint on it. I'm like, nobody cares. 
there's a little they just blow the lint off it's all good that's right we're talking we're talking maria sabri maria sabina freeze dried it's like oh yeah i'll try one of those <laughs> so yeah so b b comes up once a week and plays does game night and bring salad and we eat and play games and talk mushrooms and do fun I stuff get, i get roped into random things <laughs> So you guys are living oh, my yeah. my dream life basically yes wow i mean i can't talk to anybody down here uh, about them that's why i had to do this podcast so then we've got you know lolo and the medicis and i can't even yeah we're always we got a whole new group of friends you guys and got wonderful. a nice little and pocket there is, and do. you know when we first started coming into the group it's like everything was we got gifted so many things and yeah. it was we've been encouraged and um helped and it's you know we just can't do enough to t help other people do that yeah the medici showed up at our house when we invited him over and brought just a box of cool <laughs> stuff colonized. cool stuff crane cool and stuff. Yeah. and genetics and just really the great um crosses that they were working on and they were so generous and they're just the most lovely people we adore them oh they're great i mean i can tell you way way back one of the first growers that i i'm that i was truly in awe of and respected was good old ray i mean man back in the limitless discord that dude would show up and you know there was definitely some friendly competition everybody loved to you know have the coolest fruit picks and all that stuff and he would just periodically show up and, and do a little photo dump and we'd all just be like, what are we even growing for? Like, I'm, yeah, he's, he's great. Uh, he does some cool stuff. And then I got to know Maya and see that they, you know, are living out one of my fantasies, which is his and hers still air boxes on, on the dining room table. Um, oh, no, no, that house guys. is full of flow hoods. Their, their house, right. there's, it's, Flow yeah, all I'm over the sure. place. Oh, it's sure. not. Yes, it is. There was at least three of them last time we were but up there. Now I tell you what, think about this. Once we're like full D crim, maybe 10 years from now, I'm thinking we're gonna have uh we're gonna have like some rom com and it's gonna be, you know, the budding Michael romance and you know, it's gonna be the the, the, <laughs> the, the grower from, you know, this side. We will of the be starring in it. There you go. Yes. As, I'm always looking as, for a micro as the shroom o opposite, turns. opposite. Uh, who are we thinking here? Who are we going to cast? Uh, I'm good with like a Jason Momoa type or like long. There, he was Greek not my first long. guess as a rom-com. <laughs> is he funny? I, oh. I don't know, but okay. <laughs> we'll try it. We'll, we'll roll with it. We'll see how it does in the box office. I'm sure you will be fine with it. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. I'm great. Okay. All right. Well, so I just want to say this first off. This is cool. This is this is it right here, right? I spent a lot of time looking at mycelium under God dang it, under that microscope right there. And you know, it's cool watching the mycelium. People don't get what 400 X is. They don't get how little these things are. If you see a strand, it's a bunch of strands in there it's it's a complex network right and so i love seeing these networks and these connections grow and get established it's it just warms my heart it makes me happy i am such a cool story and then to have of course this grace the the pages of uh Michaelics anonymous it was definitely a favorite post for the week for me to see you guys meet up to see the picture of you guys I, I mean, man, I should have saved. This is the photo I wish I had right now. Is the it is uh, Mama S and Lori? I can't remember if B was you in this get photo. The picture? Too. No, I was the photographer. You oh, you took the picture, yeah, yeah. And it's just like these two ladies in a parking lot showing off their tub of mushrooms. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god, I love these people. This is what? my people right here. So, with the 5-0 yeah. in the background you know what okay let me see if i can find this picture here i got pull it i up. didn't even yeah. get a chicken bake <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna find this we're gonna find this we end up going over three different mountain passes we probably went 
what eight nine thousand feet elevation if there was snow over all three mountain passes because it's the over on the other side of the cascades but it was a yeah. beautiful trip over yeah. hill over dale that's right you guys hit the dusty trail why for some the prospect of new mushies all right let let me pull up this i got it i got it i got it share screen Where'd it go? You can do it. I have faith. It's here. Oh, it's <clears> a different tab. Okay. I was looking for a different window. It's a different tab. There you go. All right. There it is. Okay, just take a minute. Just appreciate what we're looking at here, right? All you three decade growers from the seventies, just it's <laughs> two ladies in broad daylight middle-aged ladies in the going off lot. their tubs <laughs> i love it this is i and i also man if it was me i probably have been so low-key out i had to park right next to the other car and we would slip that in and you know if you guys are just like here we go like did anybody walk by and look at you like what are you oh, yeah. doing there was people loading up their cars right next to us, but and then the cops actually drove right in front of us. Yeah, and I they like, probably, maybe we, man, maybe they probably would have. The they probably would have been like, "Oh, uh, yeah, you got a lead on that. You got a hookup on that." Yeah. They, from what I hear, they love that stuff. I wasn't sure what I was if getting they into. Know, they should. They were going. Oh, they do. Like oh, I've heard the stories. They do. Law enforcement likes that stuff. Right. They like so coffee, they like donuts, peanuts. Originally we peanuts. I came over with some plastic containers and my knife. And I was like, okay, if she'll let me take a couple of those mushrooms out of the tub, we'll put them in the plastic containers. We'll take them back to the lab and we'll clone them. And then when, as soon as I met Lori and she gave me a hug and I was like, thank you so much for driving and meeting me and taking time out of your day. And I said, could I ask you, is there any way possible that you would let me take this tub home? And she's like, of course, I was going to offer it anyway. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. Because that then you put your gun away <laughs> and you said, OK, thank you so much for this de-escalation tactic. I was ready if I had to take it by force. I was I mean, you drove four hours. If it was me, I don't care how new I was. I'd be like, this woman just drove four hours. She didn't just want to take a look at this mushroom. Yes. <laughs> so, right, Lori, me, am I right? Did you, ex you expected this was, you were going to have to. Well, I, I was like, why would she even take a specimen? As far as I'm concerned, these are her mushrooms. I just grew them. I mean, right, okay. they're hers. I just. Well, that, but see that I have this feeling that the mushrooms give you exactly what you need and they do exactly yeah. what you need. Right. And so in some sense i told sharon i said i feel kind of like these but we gave you these mushrooms and they did this thing and it was for you so i was like i don't want to have bad mushroom karma that's why i was like we're cloning i'm sending you another sending another one yeah of that yeah. specific <laughs> exactly. mushroom. so you're going to get another box of that i'm like got to keep good with the mushroom but uh, so whatever i want to I want to talk a little bit about since this is a newer species of mushroom that's been cultivated it hasn't been cultivated for very long and cubensis goes goes back to tat and when everything blew up from there but it's been decades right and now we've got all these hundreds of different cultigens of of tat but what do we have for natalensis and what has it done? And it's just really kind of how it just looks like natalensis. Everybody that grows it looks like natalensis. Then Ryan grows the green one and grows the black yep. one. And then we grow this one that is a little bit fancier. And the first thing, the first couple remarks that we got when we posted these photos on the um, Psilocybin natalensis page was that's not an ad. And I'm like, I assure you that we have very tight record keeping. We're very careful with our labeling and inoculation and keeping track of things. And we've been working towards this. It isn't just like one day we had gnats that looked exactly like gnats. And one day then we suddenly had these weird mushrooms. We were working towards that. But um, we are going to send it in for sequencing to confirm that it is actually the same as our other naps. 
Nice. Great. Oh. I mean, I believe you. So <laughs> I, I've seen you grow. I know your methodology. Uh, I got no reason to believe you're pulling a fast one over anybody. But of course, you got the naysayers, right? You got some guy out of nowhere, hasn't grown a tub in three years, going to tell you, you know, about your grow. That is, that yes. is. Lori, get ready for that. That's the fun part. That's why you stay in <laughs> Ladies in Mycology no, Facebook group. You'll, you'll be you'll be better off. Uh, yeah. Well, now that we, and now we have this new connection, we've got this new friend that we've yep. met. And we're exactly. going to, and and this is a huge connection. And she's talking about coming to the camp out and bringing her friend because we've yeah. got a new camp out coming up at the end of June. And this year is going to be twice as big as last year. And, and we're going to do another picnic this year. And it's probably going to be twice as big as last year. And um, love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, inoculation twice. points. We're talking about yes. inoculation points, guys. Lots of inoculation yes. points. Lori is, 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 a new inoculation point and her enthusiasm and her story is going to be told by her to other people yeah. and then they're going to become a this is how it goes and yeah. then everyone's doing it and they're gonna they're gonna be like and this is classic government and bureaucracy and major you know entities right they they're the last to the table they're the last to, they're just too big they can't they can't figure this crap out yeah. and eventually they're just gonna go yeah, I guess we got a, you know, we don't really got a leg to stand on anymore with this one. So it's yeah, happening. And it's, <clears throat> we're just going to keep working hard to make sure that that happens and helping yeah. as many people as we can and getting it out there and getting, you know, making people aware. And um, it's all good stuff. I mean, it's, I think we're just kind of working on healing the world. One inoculus inoculation point at a time right yes yeah. one yeah. mutated tub at a time one exactly. microdose capsule at a time yes and what's to say and you know this is what really excites me and when i see people that get excited and they grow and then they come up with something special i'm like yes because eventually we're going to figure out how to analyze this stuff and figure out what's working and how it's working and what it's doing and who knows, Lori could grow the next mushroom that cures cancer. She might have just grown it. We don't know it. what these mushrooms yeah. are going to do. We don't know. So I'm like, yeah. something is working in a way that's got people moving in a positive direction to make this happen. And the mushrooms are growing with us and they're doing what we need. And I think that eventually one day we're going to look back at this and we're going to be like, damn. Yeah. Wow. Yep. It's a good thing. Agreed. Good thing Agreed. we did that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. I mean, you know, but all the times, all the phases are great. Once it's all, you know, legal and decrimmed or whatever it is, and the Pfizer's of the world do their little thing and, and we keep doing our thing and all the things are being done, we will still look back at this time and this will be still a very special time. Absolutely. I think so. Right? It's like that country music song, right? I was country before country was cool, right? Like <laughs> we're all mushrooms we, we, before mushrooms were cool. I, I guess our song is, my song is probably more, I was into mushrooms just at the beginning of when mushrooms were getting cool. Yeah. Just maybe just before the cool factor. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it. I, uh, thank you so much for being on Lori. Uh, I can only imagine you're sitting here just going, man, I just wanted, you know, to get some more microdosing capsules. <laughs> How Next thing you know, did I end up on this <laughs> podcast meeting women in a parking lot, exchanging <laughs> mutated mushrooms and By yeah. far the weirdest things I've done, mm -hmm. but the most important <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how do you hate, right? We look for salvation in so many ways in our lives, whether it's spiritual, whether it's emotional, whether yeah. it's physical. And, and then when we don't get it, when all the structures, when all the options don't work, we get desperate and we get sad and like, we go, what the fuck? Like there's supposed to be an answer to this. Isn't there supposed to be an answer? And then you're like, the answer is in this bag of colonized grain spawn. Well, and I it's what? 
I felt rejuvenated, full of hope again. I, I'm, I'm seeing things in a completely different perspective. The negativity is seeming to dissolve around me ultimately is how I feel. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, brain fog, long haul <laughs> COVID got that had definitely felt some bone pain from a few surgeries. Uh, I didn't go through, uh, those surgeries with having mushrooms in my life. I, not looking to repeat any of those experiences to to test it out, but I imagine it would be better. Um, all I know is, man, that that after my two days off, when I go back on uh, on my micro, it's everything. That's it's it's good. I am I'm feeling like seventeen year old micro geeky. <laughs> you know, ready to take on the world the day before. I feel like, uh, like, uh, you know, not, not as good for sure, but, but it's all good. We'll get that part figured out eventually too. Maybe the old, you know, the mama D Nat cube stack is, is the way to go. We'll see. There's so many options. You know, I think the, the problem that we have is that we are treating it like it's, a uh, medicine we're used to taking like it's pharmaceutical like a pharmaceutical medication and you know your doctor says take one or two a day or take them this many hours apart or whatever and plant medicine doesn't work that way you have to listen to the medicine you have to listen to your body and that means that you might need one gram spread out through the day or one and a half gram spread throughout the day or whatever yeah we're talking if you do it and 0.1 microdoses, you might do that yeah. five, six, seven times a day, depending upon your pain level, your depression, whatever is going on. You're partying with your friends because let's not forget, sometimes you want to go have a good time, you know, and right. if you've yep. been microdosing, you might have to take a little more. So you got to kind of throw out, you got to know what the dose does, but throw out the old way of thinking and just listen to your body. And your body's going to tell you, you do too many mushrooms. They're going to make you yawn and go to bed. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like if to just stay in on top of the pain, on top of the, the emotions, the anxiety, whatever it is that's got your brain rattled, just do what you need to do when you need to do it and forget about the rest. You could like for myself, um, varieties, I switch up varieties and go back and forth with natalensis and cubensis mm -hmm. and pretty much have not taken a break. I mean, maybe here and there, um, when I'm working, I dose at night because I don't want to dose during the day. I do try to be aware of, you know, if, if I don't know if they would, but if we were to, you know, start testing for it on at work, this is a stretch, but you know what I'm saying, just to be responsible with it. Um, and then um, I just lost my damn train of thought again. Well, look, I mean, if so I, for if anyone long enough, maybe I'll fix that problem too. Is my, so, but so, and by the way, to frame this, we're talking about micro dosing. So micro we're talking about, about, you know, sub perceptual dosages. Or exactly. as the spirit pharmacist said, you know, people do seem to like a barely perceptible dose just to know that they're on it. My dose is where I can just barely feel like a little heat wave hit me, like a little flush mm -hmm. or something, maybe a little tingly, a little electricity, whatever you want to call it. Within five to eight minutes, that is, that's gone. That's my ideal dose, which for me is about 0 0.26, 0 0.28. It's different for everybody because everybody's different, yeah. right? Uh, That's the other well, thing. and then it depends on the mushroom. Yeah, and and depends different. on the mushroom. Yes. See, okay. Lori, get pay attention. It's complicated. There's you, you're only going to go <laughs> deeper into this. Yes. Yeah, that is really the one problem. That's why for people who are coming into this looking for medicine, and that is the first and foremost concern. Start with one cultigen. Yeah. Get to know it that one get that knocked down if you really then yeah. go i kind of like growing these and there's some neat looking other ones i want to grow cool go do that but yes have the one that you just know 
and is steady and stable and can deliver you, you know, that trustworthy dose is definitely what's up. Yeah, we try to put in our ready to especially if you're or- um, getting off of some sort of medication. Like for me, I was on SSRIs most of my adult life. Um, and so it was really important for me to have kind of the same thing over and over and over again. And it's right. uh, 140 milligrams of hillbilly just really does it for me. And I've never been more at peace and happier in my life, honestly. It, it really is these sentient little things have the ability to change the world. And I, I truly believe that. Yeah, I was going to say, we tried to you. put the um, more mellower mushrooms into the ready to grow kits, um, with the exception, I mean, peanuts probably are not in the B yeah. positive golden teacher range but it's got the anti-inflammatory and that's the important yeah. that part. was the part that we were yeah but um but we were looking at something that was um easy vigorous you know, easy to get easy to grow um had a lot of vigor and um people could start low and work up well and kind of find I, their the thing i notice about um navalensis is it's kind of got an exponential curve as far as the strength goes compared to cubensis so Nadalensis, you can take microdoses and rarely even feel any effect from them. But when you get up into your one gram, two gram, three grams, it's going to feel more like one and a half times, two times, um, like a Melmac or a mid-grade mushroom. And it's going to be a totally different trip. And that's a whole macro different conversation. Yeah. But for a microdose, I don't see, I don't see that if I'm taking the same amount of navalensis as a microdose as I am a Louis Vuitton that I am going to feel it more than like a Louis Vuitton or a, a Shakti or a Gandalf or a whatever in the cupboard that we're taking on a microdose basis. Right. But yeah, I don't know if that <laughs> makes sense, but the, but I just, this is only my anecdotal experience. I just feel like, Peanuts microdosed is very mild. It's not one and a half times right. a some a cubensis, a mid-range cubensis at a microdose level. When you get to the macro, it's going to be a different story. But um, I think that they're a very safe mushroom to be microdosing with for body pain and inflammation. I like it. I like it. So I, I'll say this. This is kind of one little voice in my head is saying this. So it could be that, that gnats work for everybody, right? They, they work like Tylenol uh, or, or it works like an oxycodone, or it could be that like some pain medicine works well for some people, doesn't work quite as well for others. Everybody does have di- slightly different body metabolisms for, for whatever reason. I'll give you an example. I also had COVID. My, my wife and I, we were like the third case in in the area we live in we got called by the cdc all the time uh it, it was about to be a murder suicide in, in our house it was bleak for a while we were we felt awful we were at each other's throats we were barely hanging on by a thread and i got it three other times i had it four times during the whole thing of covid all while working in healthcare during covid it was not a fun couple of years thank god for mushrooms um, I can tell you this, I still have long haul COVID symptoms and I microdose frequently. They have not had any effect in that way for me. Um, I, I hope I'm like the weirdo in the room. I don't know. I love peanuts. I, I will tell you that I love peanuts for other reasons, but for me, it didn't solve any brain fog stuff that I have. That seems to just low key keep hanging out there for me. I can't figure out is just because I got three kids. They're young. I'm, you know, stretched to my (laughs) ass all the time. Anyway, I don't know. (laughs) I really don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just blame it on the kids. I don't know what it is, but I know this. You won't know, right? Like go to Baskin Robbins. If you've never tried that ice cream flavor, you actually don't know if you like it till you try it. So, you know, this is also something to be said for trying different cultigens and seeing you know mama d might be rocking peanuts till the day she dies and lori in a year might rocking all mushrooms might right yeah 
but <laughs> I'm saying like you, that might be your favorite, right? And Lori might fall in love with KSS, you know, in, in a few months. Who we, you don't know, but you just yeah. it, it's worth trying other cultigens because the the thing that I think is really important about this story is that you have honed in on a specific cultigen that really seems to do something unique and special for you and your pain and your inflammation. And now Lori's feeling the same thing. So, I mean. Well, and right? you know, Cubensis is a wonderful, I believe it's got anti-inflammatory properties as well. I'm because that's, that's what we started with and that helped right from the beginning. Yeah, we had, okay. we felt better and maybe it is that mind body connection that you were talking about earlier. That was the reason for all of that, but who cares, whatever it is, yep. it's good. It's working. And, um, you know, I, my lab panels, I keep, I get regular blood work cause I've been messing, you know, been dealing with chronic pain for a very long time. And my doctor's amazed. She's like, that's incredible. Everything's getting better. I was like, right. There you go. Yeah, her doctor was so amazed. Her doctor was like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway. You should just make uh, some crazy ass shit up then. Don't even tell them it's, you know, because they'd believe you if you said the truth. Make something up like I've discovered dark <laughs> magic or just like make something <laughs> up that's really just unsettling. I don't know. I'll give you that's that's the take home homework. Just figure out the thing that you can tell your doctor that just has him like he can't go to sleep at night. Like, what the fuck? Did, are they really? No, I, you know what? I actually, I actually got her a book. I got her a book. I'm like, you need to be reading up on this. I was like, because if what it's done for me starts doing this for other people, you, you need, need to know. start knowing, you yeah. know, what are the drug interactions? What are the long term risks yep. and effects? And what are, I'm like, you got to hone in on this stuff okay, now, yourself. educate yourself and figure out, you know, because you're going to see a lot of middle-aged women coming into your office saying, you know, um, try this. This is what I'm doing. Now I want to stop get doing through, this. Trying or, to get through menopause, very yeah. menopause. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I've been very open. My uh, goal is to educate whoever wants to learn. Um, freely and willingly and so yeah and sometimes that means educating our doctors agreed i mean yeah we you guys watched the episode on uh different modalities uh potential modalities for for integration um even just for therapists to discuss it you know that that the therapeutic community is now saying so so many people are coming into their sessions telling me about their micro and their macro dosing experiences and their psychedelic they're like exploring psychedelics for therapeutic benefit and they they're like B -b 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 i don't know what to do and so they're writing these papers going we better figure this out and i i think the the regular old you know medicine you know pfizer moderna Johnson and Johnson, whatever it is, they are going to have to realize that this medicine's not going anywhere. The doctors are going to have to figure out what's up. Politicians are going to have to move forward. I mean, it is literally already happening. You know, DEA license are getting, getting written. People are doing more and more research. It, we're watching it happen. It just takes time now. So we just, just got to watch the, the, little snowball rolled down the hill wait for it to get to the bottom and be the big yeah then we're done and we did it so our next effort is we actually want to formalize our movement our mycelium revolution movement and so we're working on getting um nonprofit tax status nice. and we're it's really we're going to focus on it isn't all about the grow kits i mean the grow kits that's important and important to get medicine to people but that's kind of in the background the number one thing is decriminalization and uh working on those efforts and lauren lauren is helping us with that and um, we're putting together a board of directors so we can work on education and destigmatization and being a resource for the community and a resource for people who are coming in and wanting to to try to get information about this. So that's what the Michael Mama's Mycelium Revolution is all about, is 
first and foremost, decriminalization, education, and resources. So that's great. Yeah, we're sending some grow kits out to people, but um, we we're we're hoping that um, eventually we'll be able to make more of a difference. So we've got great people on our team. The Medici's are on our team, and Wishy Fun Guy and his wife, and the and B and Lauren and her husband and and um, more people reaching oh, out all the time. Yeah, it's and we've like, got. Uh, we can't we can't organize it fast we've enough. got a it's like, we've uh, got a, a psychologist on the team we've got a whole bunch of people on our team that are like yeah this is important stuff let's mm -hmm. all get together put our heads together and see how we can go forward the only That's reason great. why we put only reason why we put michael mama's name on it in the first place is just so somebody was like what is this mycelium revolution we envision it to be everybody's mycelium revolution. It's going to be Mushi's mycelium revolution and the Medici's mycelium revolution and the everybody's Geeky's it's revolution. Geeky's revolution. It's but it's oh, time you guys, that you can have your revolution. revolution. I got my own revolution. It's all good. Okay. Eventually, the revolutions will all just merge together. Yes. They already are starting. Yeah. Yep. It's already starting. Yeah. And that's a, that's great. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. The well, thank you. Oh, who said thank you? I said thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I got disoriented for I I saw movement Sorry. from Lori's cam, but then the sound I was like, "Where's this? Why am I disoriented all of a sudden?" Anyway, yes, I will say this. Uh, I I wish you well. Uh, I will always be here to be a platform to you know talk about what you guys are up to. Um, I know my buddy Mike Denver is going to be glad to hear this because he's sick. Of everybody moving to a state. And he, you know, there needs to be more states decriminalized. There needs to be more areas. Uh, Absolutely. So hopefully the Pacific Northwest is about to, uh, you know, feel feel that myceliation occur up there. And, and man, I, I tell you that what I see pretty consistently is if you can get some sort of organization going and you can organize some board meetings and you can get 20, 30, 40, 50 people lined up to get to tell their two minute stories there's a point where they just, I mean, they just like at, look like absolute fools if they don't go along with it. You just gotta, you just gotta. Reach Washington's doing a good job. Who? That's Reach, Reach Washington. Reach Washington. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I, I think um, Lolo's on the board there. And then, of course, she's doing national efforts. And yep. so that's just Fort Townsend's decriminalized one mm -hmm. city in our state Seattle is and Seattle and Seattle. Those are, we have got two cities in our state that are decriminalized, but it needs to be more. It does. Yeah. Our, apparently our governor doesn't want this to be his last term. He doesn't want to be the mushroom guy. The guy that on his way out on his way on out. His Just watch. In four years, everybody's going to want to be the mushroom guy. So he, he missed yeah. his chance. It's all good. That's what I'm, I was, thinking we just all need to write him a letter and say, dude, you're going to miss your opportunity. It's like, just do it. Your neighbors, your mom's probably growing mushrooms, but he's probably, he might be young enough to have a mom, grandma. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, it's like with cancer, should, it's like with all this stuff until it touches you, right? No one cares. Yeah. And then it, then you got a problem that nothing else is solving and you try it and then what what do you know now you're an advocate for it right so it's just slowly all we just keep doing what we're doing we're doing exactly the right thing we're telling our stories we're being upfront about it we're getting the spores and the in the grow bags and the whatever right spread the spores is a real thing i don't give away these spores for my health i give them away for right. everybody else's health i already got them for my health other people don't have them send the shit to freaking middle of nowhere in Pakistan. Why? Because they don't have them. They literally didn't have anything. Now there's a dude growing them for his people in his village there. Hey. Right? This nice. is what we got to be doing. We just, if somebody needs it, get it to them. Just, just freaking get it to them. Guys, money hungry he was guys. Up on, you make he was your up money on. on the back end. Don't worry about it. B was up on the farm in the fall and we were picking out her pumpkin out of the pumpkin patch. And she looked over and she said, isn't that philosophy uh, uh, science over there? And I was mm -hmm. like, 
I, I don't know. She said, no, I'm pretty sure it is. And so <laughs> I finally went out there and took pictures of it and sent it over to Squiggle. And, and she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you got a whole crop of those grown out there. So um, we, uh, yeah, we got a bunch of spore prints and we're, we take, we're, uh, we've inoculated our grain. We're getting ready to inoculate our wood chips and we're going back out there. And I guess we're going to have a outdoor mushroom farm too. And I want to grow. Love it. I want to grow gnats outside this spring because I've heard that they will grow outside in the Northwest. So that's the next And if Mac Ready can grow them in Maine, you guys can definitely right. grow them in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. hundred yep. percent. I think, I think this year and next year, we're going to see a lot of people looking at outdoor growing. You know, some people live in climates where it makes a lot of sense. And once you get these beds established, it's no effort. They just come back on their own. Just got to do a well, throw also, a couple we wood may chips. Or may, we may or may not know of some people who have gone around with some uh, liquid culture in syringes sure. and done uh, inoculations at the government buildings yeah. in their flower beds. Yeah. Even better. If, the, you got, if you got to go do... On the military do... bases, on the... Yeah, the revolution I love it. is here. I mean, <laughs> that's here. what's up right there. If you got to go fight your speeding ticket, you might as well be able to, you know, grab a quick natural right. microdose on the way in. That's the way I look at right. it. There you yes. go. Love it. It's going to be everywhere. Yeah. It will be. Well, I, I mean, yes, it will be. Eventually, we're going to get it there. This was yeah. awesome. I love it. I'm I'm gonna say goodbye to Lori and be saucy. And I think the only thing I, I wanna cap out on here is just thank you guys for being a part of this. Um, you know, to whatever extent you are. Lori, if you don't really like growing, that's fine. There's a bunch of people you know, that, that that will always make sure you now know trustworthy people, you know, you can get micros from. If you enjoy, you know, having a tub of them growing on your counter from time to time, you're going to get to do that for as long as you want. It's all good. Thank you. Can I just... We can already I just invited her up to the farm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm you guys You guys are already plotting to keep her forever. I get yep. it. We are. We adopted if her you, already. If you ever get a chance to go on a road trip with Mama S, go on a road trip with Mama S. Yeah, I got to play passenger princess. I did not have to drive. She <laughs> brought all the snacks. She had a cooler full of snacks for me. And then I got to go wow. meet the lovely Lori. And it was such a joy and a blessing to get to meet you, Lori. You. So and then and then I spent nine hours trying to induct you into the <laughs> EDM Hall of Fame. I made her listen to EDM perfect. music for nine hours because oh, I nice. want her to come to Base Canyon with us next year and go raven for three days. So, yeah, I think it worked. Do it. Get yeah. out there. Do I, it. I, I, yeah. Anyone have recommendations? <laughs> yes. I really like Grizz and that other one that you played with the yes, orchestra. Yes. That was great. Yeah, Pashy. The right amount of shrooms, it all sounds good. Trust me. <laughs> it all sounds good. All right. Well, yeah, so thank you, Lori. Thank you, B. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys for tonight. Appreciate you guys coming on. It was great to hear your thank stories you. and involvement. Thank you. All right. Take care, B. All right. So all I want to do yet here before you guys go is so you guys can definitely grow gnats so let's just hear for you know a lot of people are really they're on here if they hear i'm talking about integration they're like peace geeky this is not what i'm all about i'm here for the cultivation that's fine some people maybe just want a couple gems on on, on cultivating gnats now from what you said so far you like neglect tech you like small six quart dub tubs um just walk us through if i'm if I know how to grow basic cubes in a six quart shoebox, is there anything in your opinion I should be doing should be doing differently to grow peanuts the way you guys grow peanuts? No, no. Um, All right. Well, I, 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 no, no, okay. So um, the first thing is don't be afraid of this thick layer of my of mycelium right. so it's gonna look like maybe even a half an inch of snow but the the half inch a quarter inch that's it's a little come on ladies it's three-eighths <laughs> of an inch 
it's a dusting <laughs> of snow. Uh, it might be thicker. If you're getting this huge overlay, something's wrong. I just like to see this nice fluffy mycelium. And then here pops up the mushrooms. Um, and um, we, a lot of people say you should case them af before they pin. I tried that. I tried it more than once. What I didn't like is yes, my mushrooms were a little bit bigger and they seemed a little bit more vigorous, but when they came up, they had sub on them and it didn't matter whether I packed that sub mm -hmm. down or not. And I'm all about, if I got to clean a whole bunch of gnats, I don't want to have to brush sub off the gills and the caps and the stems. I know. I just want to take my tub. I, I take my, I, t I lift up the, the cake by the liner. I set it on the counter. I take my sharp scissors and I go and I just snip them all. They're yeah. cl already cleaned. I just snip them. Yeah, that overlay kind of, it's like the protective blanket. Yes, it's that, yeah. I agree. Right. And, and, but if you put this, if you case them and maybe casing works for you, the thing with any mushroom is you got to dial it into your environment. Yeah. So what, what I recommend is make twice as much grain as you need for one tub. If you're really just working on still dialing something in, split yeah. that, split that bag, two different tubs, and then change one variable. So mm -hmm. in one tub, you're maybe you'll put the casing layer on it after the mycelium is um, all colonized on the grain. And that one you're going to case. Then the other one, don't case it. Then grow your mushrooms. Which one grows better for you? Oh, the one with the casing layer. Well, how much of a casing layer do I need? Well, then do two more tubs. And this one, I'm only going to put a half inch. This one, I'm going to put an inch on. Which one grows best? And then just keep following Wait it. Wait a minute. Until... You want me to think about this stuff? Is that what you're saying? You want me to put a modicum of thought into this, this how, process? This is just how we did it. But yes, we, I agree. we grow in an open tent. It's got a fresh air replenished system. So it's got uh, air coming in. It's we've oh, we've have its own um heat pump system in that room so we keep it at 68 degrees there's constant air movement and then and now the co2 we i monitor co2 yeah. in the tent and it never really gets above but you asked 800 a, even if we're both in there and we're doing stuff yeah and but so, as far as it usually goes, stays around four you, or five if you are a tub modifier Try it with modified tubs. I just don't like burning holes in tubs. So I'm like, how can I do it without modifying my tubs? Well, that's when I came up with the little tile spacers. And so, and I put a video on our, we've got a YouTube channel. There's yeah. a video on the YouTube channel on how to use the tile spacers, if that's your thing. But if it's not your thing and you like burning holes in tubs or cutting holes in tubs and putting polyfill in them or tape over them or patches or whatever, go do that. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, the, the whole so I think, hold on, let me say this real quick. So uh, for everybody watching, I think they brought up an interesting point and a good point, which is what works for them might not work for you. Exactly. We all live yeah. in different places. And so this little simple, you know, change one thing approach with each grow cycle, try it this way, then change one little thing, you know, if you if you run a casing layer no casing layer one time and you like the no casing layer and you just give up on casing layer and you do one single one off side by side experiment you know maybe the thickness of the casing layer was the problem maybe if you had adjusted that uh you know up or down a little bit maybe you'd have had the most spectacular flush you've been dreaming of but if you don't keep fafoing and making little adjustments and you know becoming a real cultivator really trying to see what works what improves fruit quality what improves yield what what makes it easier i know for me as a cultivator i love figuring out ways to make the process easier for me ways that make me not have to hawk these like children worrying about them stalling out because i did too much of this or not enough of that and yeah i i, I love keeping it uh I love tech that allows it the process to start and then I can just let it be and do its thing. Some people love to hawk. Some people love to, so you, you truly, that's an important message. <clears throat> this is what works for them. They have a modified Martha, uh, setup, you know, they're regulating air exchange. They're controlling temperature cycles. 
if you don't have that, you are going to have to figure out what works for you. I love that. Yeah, you I might have to sit them like next to a window or a door that you go yeah. in and out of often enough, but if they get too much condensation, you know, then obviously you got to put them someplace where yeah. they're, that's, you know, yeah, just play with it. And also keep in mind, play with it either. the, the, if you look up the type species uh, paper on Natalensis, right. They said it's, it's in a much more arid area. I forget the term for the climate that it specifically described, but there, it literally says in the paper that you should expect, right. This stuff's going to want a little bit more air. It's, it's not damp, heavy, humid air. It's a little bit lighter. So feel free to give it a little more air. Yeah. But you know, what's crazy. It grows. Even yeah, if you does, don't sure. give it, it's like yeah. it just looks different. It's like, Oh yeah. Okay. It yeah, finds a way want the, it wants to grow. It does. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy stuff. Natalie's. Yeah. You definitely love it. Yeah. Man. I, I still got, I'm working, I haven't grown them in a while. I still got a, a, a jar I'm working down on. So I'm, I've been good, but, uh, Somebody just sent me some of Ryan's black cap gnats. Going to have to, you know, I think going to have to put them in rotation here. They look fun. Um, the green cap gnats look cool. Um, I love what Mama S was saying earlier of like, you know, we got a million cultigens in the cubensis species. Um, and now, thanks to Ryan, um, you know, we're, we're seeing some other variation. The, the Michael Mamas are getting interested in this. Um, it's important to maybe have more people growing some gnats, do some more isolating, go back to spore, hunt down some phenotypes you like, you know, put a little work into this cultigen. If Mama D and Mama S didn't give you guys some reasons, you know, medicinally that you might want to give gnats a try if you haven't yet, let's give them a grow. I'm excited about the crosses too, the gnat. Yeah. The you know, the yellow umbo that, yep. you know, it's the possibilities are endless. And, you know, I just love it listening to you guys talk about this monocross, this gnat. I'm seeing the Medici's Ed, you know, dichotomous. Yep. Man, all the, yeah, it's think just, about there's going to be we, so many amazing mushrooms. I'm just so excited. Imagine when we get like, you know, the, the squat gnat, the fat gnat, the you know, the crazy, yeah, <laughs> crazy, like ghost Casper potent level gnats, like, but we just got to oh. put more work into them. They are newer. They, you know, cubes had when two we decades. When do the gnat syndicate? Nat yeah, we, syndicate. we want a gnat syndicate instead of a tat oh, syndicate. There you go. There it is, yeah. guys. New Facebook group to join. And for all Nat you guys syndicate. butthurt, you can't get in ladies in mycology. Here's your chance. Nat syndicate. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> It's happening. I love that. I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's a unique spice there. It, it's a little different. There's a little something. It's nice. There's, there's so other cultigens gonna, that are like that for me, but, but yeah, nets are definitely a standout. We're going to make sure that this one's stable and then we'll make sure that it's available for people. Yeah. It's the bougie net. It's going to be the, you know, you, you, you guys already did the fancy, you guys had some fancy cat nets, but now Lori's tub, that's looking just straight up bougie. That's that aristocratic, you know, that little collar they wore around their neck. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That's full, fr full thrill right there. Yes. All right. We're right about okay. the two hour mark. I think we, we, we talked all the talk. It was pretty fun. Oh, I know there was oh. one more thing I wanted to pull up because you guys sent it to me. We're going to show it. Let me find it here. Uh, where did it go? Give me one second. So, well, uh, I can tell you we're Patreon supporters and we encourage people to, to do that if they can, even if it's a little bit, because we think what, what you're doing is very important. And we well, love all the different guests and we've met so many new people. I mean, we wouldn't have met Lauren if you wouldn't have had her on. It's great. And then Jennifer was just on and we're getting to know so many awesome people all across the nation. And yeah, there's just so many cool people so in this better. community. There yes. are so many cool yes. people. And we right, love meeting. Let me show you this guys. So 
not only are they starting a mycelium revolution, not only are they amazing cultivators, not only are they amazing people, not only are they, are they out there telling their story, running oh ladies of mycology, like I can only hope to be killing it uh, like, like the mamas are killing it right now. But in addition to that, check this out. Check this out. All right. They make jewelry. They make jewelry. And yes, it's got some little mushrooms in it. So let's let's take a look at nap pendants. I love it. And so this we have a spore print with some some little baby gnats. You you literally created a Bob Ross landscape within is this a pine cone slice what is it it's called a knob cone pine cone they're okay they're from southern oregon northern california and they only open at 500 degrees so they're like wood they're very very dense so we buy the pine cones they're ethically gathered and then i take them to the barn use a bandsaw cut slices out of them but what was happening was the centers kept falling out of them i was just decorating the front of them but then Mm -hmm. the centers kept falling out and i was like well what am i going to do with them now and i'm like oh what if i put a little scene in there and just made like a little yep mushroom scene so i started doing that oh i like this one that's one i've just just finished so the gnats worked really well for that because they're tiny mushrooms now this one has our first freeze dried gnats in it. So you can see how much Ooh. different the mushrooms look than the other ones because the other ones they are dehydrated. Do. And then this one, now Ooh. that we have a freeze dryer, yes. so I'm pulling out those little tiny mushrooms, throwing them in the freeze dryer. And this has um, some enigma in it too. Do you see those little things in between the mushrooms? Oh, um, goodness. They're, they're look little at that right enigma there. fins. I love and it. then th- this actually is a, um, a custom piece that someone ordered. So I'm working on it. It doesn't have the... It doesn't have the resin in it yet, mm-hmm. so this will be covered with resin, and then, and then it'll be shiny and preserved. I love it. So that's the fun thing we do. That's what, those are on yeah, our website too. Because with all their free time, when they're not doing all the other things, <laughs> then they they just also do that. Yes, I love it. Well, I can tell you, pre mushrooms, a lot of this would not be happening, but yeah. post. It's like a whole new lease on life, and I just can't yeah. share it enough. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's good All stuff. All right. Well, Thank Michael you. Mamas, yet again. Um, now, keep in mind, guys, this is not, we haven't even talked about them just as cultivators yet. We're planning that whole episode. This is just the, we had to tell the story. It just happened. It was topical. I had somebody, you know, failed to show up for for a scheduled taping and i was like what am i gonna do and they came to the rescue because that's what they do they did it for Lori. they did it for geeky they're gonna do it for other people and we'll probably have them on to talk about that too this is what happens when you have a transformative experience and you're like wow and you're a good person and then you instead of going "Ooh, i could capitalize on this i could get rich doing this you go wow I know lots of people who need this. This is, I guess I should probably tell these people about this. And that's what they're doing. That's why I love them. Well, we would love to come back and talk mushrooms and show off our fun grows because we, we, we're. You got some. I've seen them. Then they love us. They do. Look, they love you so much. They came to your backyard. They just started growing in your yard for you. That's great. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm waiting. Oh, Mushrooms. Around. Actives, where are you? I need the ovoids. I am working on an ovoid bed this spring. So we'll see. If I can get ovoids to grow on my property, that will be it's gonna be a party. We're gonna throw a big old party. We should do an outdoor Navalence. Grow along. Grow along. I love so I I want to just say an outdoor bed grow along. Like if whatever okay. you want to grow I yes like this spring i already got a bunch of people going this spring we're hitting it hard we're doing it so yes let's just put that out there bring, on the table bring on some more yes. guests who can give us some tips on doing that yes like well, we got them i got them lots of tips okay yeah yep we'll do it there there i think it's just you got to go outside 
I was going to gotta do some stuff she, outside. We got this. She just does it. Yes. We, we know what we got to do. Yeah. She I knows got, what I got we a bag, have to do. I got a bag of, She's already doing it. Yeah. It's great. We just have to do it. That's We got to find time. We just got to do it. Well, yeah, we, just we don't know do that it. our freeze is over. We don't know that it's done freezing here. So, now, so the great thing, a lot of these guys, warm. two years, it takes two years to get a lot of these species established in a bed outside. You, you're not going to necessarily see fruit the first year. You're just trying to get, you know, you're trying okay. to colonize some, some grain, then some wood chips, and then you're trying to bring really well colonized wood chips out into these beds, keep them watered. Okay. We'll have Mac ready back on. Hopefully we can have Jack and, and Happy and some other guys that are doing some outdoor stuff. To, to talk about it some more, but I don't think it's that hard of a nut to crack. It's just, yeah, go outside and do a little bit more heavy lifting. It's not tiny tubs. I really liked walking out into the garden and just finding them. That, that went yeah. really well for me. Yeah. See, that's why you got to go to NAMA. You got to come to NAMA with me and you're going to find that, I mean, sure, they don't all have psilocybin in them, but it is fun to go out in nature and find new mushrooms and explore new morphologies right. well, and know, it's fun i don't know we're still up in the air because the denver psilocybin or denver psychedelic cup is that same weekend but how often okay. is nama in washington state nah, it's not it's gonna not be gonna for happen. a while yeah it's not gonna happen yeah. again so we're leaning towards nama i think I we it. did go to the psychedelic cup last year so that was very very fun and you know we got to meet yeah. casey and humble brews and quite a few others and it was yep. it was an awesome time but um yeah well so, i won't be mad if you if you go Alabama. back there but i would love it if you i mean the pacific northwest if in the fall tickets. if we can get tickets well, oh, we can we heard the tickets are kind of hard to get so um as soon as they're available let us know and yep. we'll yep. probably we'll probably lean towards that i think i just thinking. bring the motorhome down I Go think it's going to gonna be a good time. It's going to be a yeah. good time. And you're going to get to meet and learn and have a blast. And yeah. hang out with you for the weekend. Yeah, we're going to. That Ge should be no brand. Geeky's going to bring a bunch. There's going to be a whole nother faction at NAMA. It's going to be the, who are these people? And where'd they come from? And I don't know. We don't, what we forays don't know much are they going on? We don't know much about foraging. Let really me tell you what. Mushrooms. Give them to him. He'll go. To yeah. Let, like, let me tell you this. If, if this. you guys are half half as <laughs> motivated out out in the woods as you are in your lab, I think you guys will you guys will catch on real fast. I mean, I'm no pro. Do you know how to walk? And do you know how we, to look we, at things? That's when we first do. before we even grew mushrooms, we were out in the out on our 11 acres tramps around going is there any mushrooms growing out here well that's how mushy fungi found us because i was trying to identify one that i found on one of the horse mm -hmm. piles right i was like what is this could this be and um the next thing i know i get an invitation to join the network for the mycology network and and it was all you know yeah so it was we all off and running it was all, yeah. that's how it goes but yeah, so we spend a few, fair amount of time looking for mushrooms on the farm, but we yeah. just don't know what we're looking at. So we send Look, the pictures. I, I'm going to tell you this. And she tells us. It's <laughs> probably never going to get closer to you than this year. So any but other yeah. year down the road, yep. if you want to go, gonna it's going to be a bigger travel, man. Yep. It's kind of right there for you guys. It's exactly. It's and we can take the, it's close enough. We can take the motor home. We can actually yeah. afford the gas to go to Mount Rainier. Yep. So yep. We'll, yeah. And we can be comfortable. So, yeah, we'll be All right. there. Party at NAMA this tickets. year, guys. We'll be there. We'll, we'll work on that. I will make sure people know when those go on sale, for sure. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate we'll, it. We'll, we'll keep up on that one. All right. Well, thank you for thank being you. on and telling that story. It was great to have you on, and uh, we will do it again soon. Sounds good. All right. Have All a good right. evening. Good night. Good night. Yep. Good night. You too. All right. All right, guys, once again, the one and only Michael Mama's Mama D Mama ass killing it. The enthusiasm uh, cannot be, you know, you, you can't fake the enthusiasm. People just know whether you truly love growing mushrooms or you don't. It's that easy. And they absolutely love growing mushrooms. I love hearing them talk about it. 
I love hearing about them traveling hours and hours and hours just to find somebody's tub to possibly isolate a really cool fruit. Yes, more of that. I want to hear more of these like outrageous mushroom cultivation stories. I'm sure there are more out there. Um, if you guys want to uh, check out their pendants, know more about the mycelium revolution, um, check out some of their merch. They got some cool shirts they're selling right now. All that stuff is in the links in the description below uh, the, the show. Check it out. Uh, if you just want to say hi, if you want to join the ladies in mycology, whatever you want to do uh, pertaining to the people that were on the show tonight, just uh, check out the description. It's all down there. Um, I hope you guys have a, a wonderful week, wonderful weekend. I think we're coming up on a, on a, on a was it President's Day or something like that? Anyway, should be, uh, you know, a good week to go grow some mushrooms. <laughs>